Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. And Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There's no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, yeah. amen, I say to you, will surely not lose their reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he was cast into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life main and with two hands go into Gehenna, unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two feet be thrown into Gehenna. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better be thrown under the kingdom of God with one eye, with two eyes be thrown into Gehenna. With a worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Every time we gather for Sunday Mass, there are always four piece of scripture that are proclaimed. That's why it's important to be on time for Mass. Amen? Amen. As we gather together, we sing our song, and we, we sit down and listen to God's Word. We are a Word Church. Amen? Amen? It's important to be on time to receive God's Word. And today, in this church, and indeed every Catholic church throughout the world, Every church, on every continent, the same texts are being proclaimed. Amen? Amen. We're tied together, church. Yes. Book of Numbers, Old Testament, Psalm 19, sung so beautifully as it is every Sunday. A letter from James, a strong letter, James chapter 5. In the Gospel of Mark, ninth chapter, the last few verses. And if you were listening and truly paying attention to the Word, the Word is challenging today, amen? amen. See, the Word of God sometimes cuts you. We need to be cut sometimes in the name of Jesus. And in fact, every one of the texts today could be a little sermon unto itself. I'm not going to preach four sermons today. Amen. Amen. But I am going to focus on a couple of verses that literally jump off the page. Jesus speaks about cutting off your hand, your feet, and plucking out your eyes. That's not meant to be taken literally. If it were, I'd have no arms, no legs, and I can't see a thing right now. But what does Jesus mean? He's not talking about self-mutilation, not literally going around chopping off body parts. What is he talking about? What's the goal? When you were baptized in Christ, whether a little baby, or grown adult, we're called to be a do-right Christian. Yes, yes. You were here last Sunday, you heard a word about being a do-right Christian. And it's not easy, is it? No, it's not. 
But if you are baptized in Christ and claim to be Christian, that's why you should be in somebody's church on Sunday morning. There's no such thing as taking time out because the Word says, keep holy the Sabbath day. Sunday is our day because it's the day that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And because of that, we should be in church to worship, to worship, even when we're on crutches. Even when we don't feel so good. When we got problems at home, we should be up in here, up in here, up in here, up in here to give God praise and thanks for what God has done. We are Christians. It's not easy. But the goal is to live right, to do right, to speak right, that we can find a home up there. You know, we go to a restaurant, you make reservations. You get to the, the little desk there, you say, Thorn party of four. You don't want them to say, I'm sorry, sir, we have no reservations for Thorn party of four. But, 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 I, I you're not in the book. You can wait on the side. If we have some seating, we'll, we'll take you in then. You don't want that. I don't want that. When I hear my name called, I want them to say, well done, good and faithful servant. I got a seat for you in the kingdom. I, come on in. Come on in, take your seat at the table. That's what I want. We know by his death and resurrection, we are redeemed, washed in the blood. Person, if anybody asks you who I am, you tell them, I am redeemed. But I have to continue to work out my salvation each and every day to live what God has for me. Yeah. It's not just why well, I'm baptized. I got confirmed. No. You got to walk and talk and be in the ways of God. That's not easy. It's a tough, nasty world. But if we are in Christ. The goal is salvation. It's a get there on the other side. So what does Jesus mean? He's talking about the goal. What is the goal? Salvation. Something the world can't give you, the world can't take from you. That's why we, in the pain of death, us, we call it home going, don't we? I'm going home. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world and go home to my God and be free. The folks preached and taught. We got a home up there. But we're here. And Jesus is talking about how we live here and not getting the way of the way. In Numbers, you see, the Lord gave help to Moses. These 70 elders meant to help him lead the community. And Joshua comes on and says, Moses, we saw somebody preaching and we told him to stop. Don't tell him to stop. Well, Eldad and me, Dad, were prophesying too. They weren't part of our little group. And What's the goal? Doesn't matter how you got there, what's the goal? The goal is what that all people were prophets. What that everybody heard the word of God proclaim. Y'all with me this morning? Yes. You see, Moses says, don't lose sight of the goal. 
And the same thing comes from Jesus. But as we do this, there may be times we have to cut it out, cut it off, and pluck it out. Again, not so much about a literal having surgery to yourself, but maybe we all need some spiritual surgery. I know I do. I got two, three, 15. Anybody honest in church besides me? The rest of y'all lying. I can put two, I, I know I got issues. Don't agree to that, but I got issues, I can say it. But he says, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It means, is there someone, something, some place in your life that gets in the way of Jesus? Cut it off. Is there something you're looking at that gets in the way of your beatific vision of God, then pluck it out of your vision. Is there somewhere you go, you think nobody knows about it, right? Don't go there. Change your direction, change your life. It's not worth it. Is it a relationship in your life that gets in the way. Get rid of it. You're worth too much. He thought I was worthy. He thought enough of me. He saw the best in me. When everybody else could not see that, he saw something in me. I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of respect. I am worthy. And when you know that, I'm talking especially to my sisters today. When you know that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you, know, that you and you know, you are God's property. You belong to God. Don't let anybody get in the way of your Jesus. Let no one, I don't care who it is, get up. Don't let anybody get in the way. Get rid of it. And I speak to my brothers, my young brothers especially, you respect Women, because they are queens and princesses from God. Can I get some men in church, some young bucks in church to stand up and say, women deserve respect and... You ain't standing. equal in the eyes of God. What have we done? What have we done? We need to make some surgery. Tuck, take something away because if it gets in the way of Christ, it's got to go. Think about our habits. And again, I'm not I talk, you listen today. I don't preach that way. Long before I preached today, I preached over there in my house. As I wrestle with the Word, the things I'm preaching to you, I need back at me. Don't think the preacher got it all together. Father, you cut it off. You cut it out. But 
I say to you, what are the habits we have that are not of Christ? What are the things that we do? Well, nobody really knows about that. God sees. God sees. And today's word is meant for all of us to take an assessment of our spiritual life, of our moral life. The little ones don't know yet. But when you grow up, you know the difference between right and wrong. You know how to sit still in church. At least you should. Little ones, he don't know yet. He going to learn today, though. Sorry. <laughs> but we, all of us, we come to church like a gym to be exercised. We come to church to get stronger. You, 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 you're lifting 50, well, do 75. You, you're running two miles, do two and a half. That's what church should be, a gymnasium for the spiritual life. If your church and your pastor and your preacher is not stretching you, get a new church because we're called to be working out. What are the habits? Where are the websites? What are the places? What are things we do? Is it drinking? Is it smoking? Is it pornography? Is it gambling? Is it being a nasty, nasty old man? Who never has anything good to say? Or a nasty old lady, just mean. Cut it out. Being a nasty old priest, cut it out. If you like politics or law, or government, civics, social studies, this has been your kind of week, huh? How many of us grew up on, hey, hey, hey? <laughs> it's Fat Albert, and I'm going to sing a song for you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes. And the Cosby Show, showing us as black folks, not just shucking and surviving. We made it. Brownstone doctor, attorneys. Bill well, Cosby's in jail. I was glued to my television Thursday, watching what she said and listening to what he said, we don't make fun of people. We don't laugh at them. We don't say, oh, they, I told you so. By the grace of God, that could be us. But we learn, we learn, and we teach. What a lesson to be taught to our young ladies and our young men. A young woman in my class, a young, black, educated college student, she said to me, Father Thorne, Bill Cosby couldn't done that, done that thing. I, I don't believe it. It couldn't have happened. Not him. 
Maybe somebody else, but I said, why do you think not him? Well, that, 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 that. We don't laugh. We don't make fun. We stay woke. We stay aware. And we listen. And we teach. And we pray. I believe the doctor. I believe something horrible happened to Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. I believe it. And whether you believe it or not, it's not a debate at Mass today. We have to recognize the horror of sexual assault that's been done to women and men, but mostly one out of three women have been assaulted. One out of six men, that's stats from the CDC. The same thing. You cannot get on a pulpit today and not talk about waking up and being aware of the things that keep us from being Christian. You can scream and yell and pound your face and your head all day long, judge. But how many people really spoke about underage drinking in a Catholic school? Almost like, well, that's just how it is. I don't care if you go to Georgetown Prep, St. Joe's Prep, Malvern Prep, wrong. I don't care where you go. You don't do that. And where are we teaching our young men about that? And our young ladies? That's what I mean by cut it out. That's what I mean by we have to look and see deeply because God doesn't need the FBI. Come on. <laughs> God knows. God knows. Oh, you might, <laughs> you might pass and get on the Supreme Court, but God knows. God knows. And you know what? <laughs> I'm not worried about that Supreme Court so much. I'm worried about another Supreme Court. I'm worried about another justice of the peace. I'm worried about being right before Jesus. I'm worried about making sure when I cross over, I don't need a defense attorney. I want to say to me, well done. It didn't just look right. It was right. Well done. It didn't just simply give folks what they wanted to hear. You preach the truth because truth wins. Well done. You didn't simply say, well, that's what guys do. No, that's not, I'm a man. That's not what guys do. Well done. My mother, from her place in heaven, always taught me to do the right thing, especially when it comes to women. I will continue to speak out. The same thing I speak out against abuse of children. We must do better. We will do better. We'll hear a word today that's challenging, meant to be, for all of us to look at ourselves and check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Because I want to reign with Jesus. Yes, he's king of kings, lord of lords. He's the judge of the Supreme Court justice. He reigns. He reigns forever and ever. I want to sing praises to my king because today especially we need to know I want to be there on the other side where Jesus Christ 
reigns. He reigns. He reigns forevermore. He reigns. Sing the praises to the king. He is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. He reigns. He reigns. Lord of Lords. And as we stand today in that resurrection posture, so Sunday, God's day. Sunday's the day we come and give God praise and thanks just because God is God. We come once again profess our faith 
That one line that says, he will come again in judgment of the living and the dead. We want to be right and do right. So I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.